brilliant stroke. I was reading an article, and I, I'm going to tweet this article out because it's really a great article by uh, Matt Brunig, who is really starting to be one of my favorite writers and uh, policy uh, analysts. And he was talking about the general argument about capitalism and the poverty that is baked into the system. Um, I don't have much time to go into it because we're running out of time, but I, I want to point out a couple of things um, that he that he highlighted. He Capitalism has always been heralded as the best means of allevi alleviating poverty. And we've seen, he gave an example of, um, of, of capitalists pointing to um, the reduction of poverty from 90% down to 15% um, overall. And so they point to that as evidence that Everything is fine if you just let the market take care of it, but it pays no attention to that last 15% who would work, who could work, but can't work because of the factors of the system and how the argument is usually, um, the argument usually ends here where capitalists are going to yell and say, well, we've done, look at all we've done. We shouldn't worry about that last 15 percent. And then, of course, the socialists and socialist Democrats would say, no, we need to alleviate poverty. We need to reduce that 15 percent. We can't ignore that 15 percent of people, which the math actually doesn't add up. I have to go back and read it again. He said 90 percent and 15 percent. So let's let's assume he meant 85 percent and 15 percent. But let's go back and grab that last 15 percent and reduce poverty there. It kind of goes in line with what Warren Buffett said, who is absolutely a capitalist. But he said on yesterday that there's no reason reason in the United States where the per capita income is 50,000 a year that we should have so many people living in poverty. And so we ignore, we ignore that last 15% because we think our economy has done all that it can do when in actuality there are inherent vices to capitalism that will always keep a segment of society left out. And that is the conversation that people don't want to discuss. One of the major factors that I will go into really quickly is the fact that capital begets capital. If you start off in life with wealth, you are more likely to always remain healthy, healthy, wealthy. If you start out in life with access to capital, you can always grow capital. If you're born in poverty and you're born without access to capital and you're not you're born without access to finances there's nothing you can do about your dream about your entrepreneurial goals because you cannot finance them and so it is a statistical fact and I still can't find this article but there's a, a scholarly article that um and I, I I have to find the source but it discusses the fact that people born with capital are going to remain with capital they are far more likely to ever come down the economic strata in the United States. And then people who are born in poverty are far less likely to ever get out of poverty because of how capitalism works. And you look at Jeb Bush's policy proposal, it is guaranteed to continue to amalgamate capital at the top without any structure to help anyone in the middle class or the lower class, lower middle class or those in poverty to ever gain access to the capital that would help them allevi alleviate their poverty and help them move up the economic strata. The more we give in terms of our collective coffers to the top, the less we are able to fix the problems that are inherent to capitalism. And I can summarize the entire segment there. If we keep giving tax breaks and we keep giving all of these subsidies and we keep redistributing wealth to the top, then we will never be able to address the inequalities that are inherent. It's not that capitalists are evil. It's not that corporations are evil. It's not that the top 1% is evil. Some of them may be, but that's not the point. The point is capitalism as a whole has an inherent vice, and that is capital begets capital. And if you don't have capital, you cannot get capital. Not the average American. You always have the exceptional few who can find ways of turning a penny into a million dollars.
but that's not the average American. And we're talking about the average American. That is the inherent vice of capitalism. And if we keep um, obfuscating the conversation, the actual debate, then we'll always be looking at these extremes when we don't have to deal in the extremes. We're not talking about overthrowing capitalism. And we're not talking about giving, um, uh, uh, we're not talking about feeding the poor to the wolves. We're talking about fixing and addressing and using the, the, the collective coffers, using legislation to address the inherent vices of capitalism so that the people who are born in poverty have a chance, not at becoming a billionaire, but have a chance of not having their own children also be born in poverty. All right, folks, there's so much more I can deal with.